guys. So I know it's been a while since I did my last speaker review, but I'm back with a good one. That's right, I finally got my hands on a brand new Sony XB33. I'm gonna let you guys know how it stacks up against last year's XB32 and if it's worth a buy. Let's check it out. So let's get started here. As you can see, Sony redesigned the XB33 from the ground up. I mean, this looks nothing like last year's XB32. So here's my Sony XB32 that I reviewed about 11 months ago. And if I put these side by side, I mean, look at the differences here. I mean, taking a look at these two speakers side by side, I would never guess that this is last year's model. So first, let's look at the size difference here. I mean, it just dwarfs last year's XB32. And then flip it to the side and you can see, yeah, there's a lot of changes going on here. There's a lot to talk about. And then let's check out the backs of each individual speaker. There you go. All right, let's put this off to the side and let's start talking about what has changed. So if you guys saw my review on the XB32, you're gonna know that I wasn't a big fan of all that soft touch rubber that they wrapped it in. I was a much bigger fan of the XB31 where if I show you the 32 here, it was basically the same design, but this fabric mesh was wrapped all the way around the back here so it didn't have this soft touch rubber. And I wasn't a fan of this soft touch rubber because of how easy fingerprints and scratches got all over it. So you can see with the 33, they solved that problem because they basically wrapped the whole thing in this fabric mesh again, except for both ends here where you see it still has that soft touch rubber. And that soft touch rubber houses, that's right, Sony finally gave us dual passive radiators on each side. So now they're taking a page out of another speaker company that's been doing this for years. Um, I'm not gonna name that company, but their first name starts with a J and the last name starts with L. But I'll get into these dual passive radiators a little later on in this video when I talk about the sound. Yes, the XB33 does retain that LED light show as you saw in the 32, but as you can see here on the 32, it wraps from the top and the bottom right along to the sides. And as you see on the 33, it still retains that light show, but it wraps each of those radiators in a nice LED light show. So on the 32, we have the Sony logo right there and we have the Sony logo on the very bottom. On the 33, we have it smack right there on the top left. And then on each passive radiator, we have the Sony logo. And if you look on the bottom, there's no more Sony logo, just two rubberized feet. So let's take a look at the function buttons on the top. This is what the XP33 used to look like here. We have one, two, three, four, five buttons, but they also double as other functions. And then on the new 33, we have one, two, three, four, five, six buttons. They also double as other functions, and I'm gonna go over those right now. So first off, we have the power button here. So it's just a one touch on, a one touch off operation. Now this works exactly like the XB32. I wasn't the biggest fan of the one touch on, one touch off operation. I'm a much bigger fan of having to hold that power button down to turn it on and off. Now the XB32 didn't have a dedicated Bluetooth button. What you had to do was hold down the power button for a few seconds and then it started searching for your phone. The XB33 now does have a dedicated Bluetooth button. Now right next to that is the play pause button. Now if you hold that down, you can actually activate Siri on your iPhone. Or if you get a phone call while you're streaming music, Music. You can answer your telephone just by pressing that button. You can actually talk and hear people through the speaker. Right next to that is the volume up, volume down button, which actually doubles as track forward and track back. Now next to that is the live button. You can actually switch between extra bass or live mode, which is their 3D surround mode. And if you hold down that live button, there's something new called stamina mode. Now on the XB32, it was just called standard mode, which is basically a power saving mode. And last but not least right here, that isn't a button. That's just a near field communication symbol. All right, now let's flip it around to the back 
back side under this flap. So right here we have a USB type A out. Now this speaker will double as a power bank just like the XB32. If you do have a charging cable, plug it in right there, plug in your phone and you can start charging. And right next to that, that's right, Sony finally upgraded to USB type C. So that was one of my biggest complaints on the XB32. It still used micro USB when there was a much better type C available. And now finally Sony gives us that USB type C in, which to me is a huge upgrade. And right next to that we have our light and battery button. So turning this on, if I press that battery button once, battery fully charged. It's going to give us our battery status. And if I hold that battery button down for a few seconds, it's going to turn the LED lights off. So if I hold it back down for a few seconds, it should turn the lights back on. There we go. Now that button right next to it, is the party connect button. Now that used to be the wireless party chain button. So you might be asking if your older XP32 or XP31 could still connect to the XP33 via wireless party chain. And that answer would be no. Sony basically ditched the wireless party chain for party connect. So that means the new Sony XB33 can only connect to the XB23, the XB33, and the XB43. And the button right next to that is the stereo pair button. That's exactly where the add button used to be. So that's right, this speaker will not pair to any other speaker other than another XB33. So the only way to pair this to another speaker to get that nice stereo sound is two XB33s, not an XB33 and an XB32. Now if I hold both of these flaps open on both of these speakers, can you tell me what's missing yeah that's right no more 3.5 auxiliary jack why would they do that you say well because they added bluetooth 5.0 that was another big disappointment that i had with the 32 is it still had bluetooth 4.2 so that's another thing that they upgraded they finally gave us bluetooth 5.0 and i'll be testing out the latency on a youtube video because if they didn't give us that aux jack there better be no latency from the YouTube video to this speaker. So you can see I picked up this speaker in the blue color. So there's four colors available. There's a red, this blue, a black, and a taupe color. I don't have too many blue speakers. I don't think I made the wrong choice at all. This thing's gorgeous. So obviously you can see they went with a radically different design than last year's model. And making such a drastic change in the design, they're bound to make some people unhappy with it. But for me, I love it. I mean, yes, the XB32 was a little bit easier to hold in your hands, but based on the way it's shaped back here, my hand fits perfectly around this back end. And as you can see, it gets wider as it gets to the front where those drivers are. And plus, I just wanted a fresh new look because the XB32 looked a lot like the XB31. So since it has a brand new fresh look, let's talk dimensions. <laughs> So let's talk about that battery life. They say it has a battery life of 24 hours, but the only way to get that 24 hour battery life is with the stamina mode on and the lights off. If you have extra base on and the LED light show on, you're looking at about 14 hours. And I found the battery life on the XB32 to be about 10 to 14 hours. That's what the LED light show on and about mid range on the volume. And that's about exactly the same amount of battery life as I'm getting on this XB33. So with the extra base on, with the LED lights on, you're looking at about 10 to 14 hours based on where you you have your volume. All right, so what else is new other than Bluetooth 5.0 and USB type C? Well, if you can see in there, look at the shape of those drivers. That's right, they updated the diaphragm shape from perfect circles to, I'm not even sure what those are. They're not exactly triangles or circles. They're just a little misshapen. Now, Sony calls this the X balance speaker unit. Why did they do this? Well, they claim it has increased sound pressure and reduced distortion. Well, the question is, do these new shapes make a difference in sound quality? Well, stick around for my sound test. I'm gonna let you guys know. So last year's XB32, I absolutely loved its crystal clear sound, but that was at between 50 and 75% volume. Anything over that, the bass got a little muddy and it drowned out the rest of the sound. But at 50 to 75%, I felt that it was one of the best sounding mid-range speakers that I've heard. So what about the new XB33? Well, let's get into that sound test right now. All right, so let's open up the Sony Music Center here. Now you can see there's the SRS XB33. Now, before I start the music test here, um, let's go over this app really quick. So you can see library right here. That's if you have any saved music on your phone, which I don't. Um, 
the music app right here. I'm not gonna go and do that, so let's back out of there. Also, you see Spotify there and Fiestable, but I'll get into that a little later on. So let's get into our settings, and under sound, you see Clear Audio Plus. Now, if you press that on, that's gonna be Sony's recommended sound settings right there. Now, if you wanna adjust your own bass, mids, and trebles, you can go right here, and you can see it has a three-channel equalizer right here. So when I'm doing the sound test, after a little bit, I'm going to adjust these just to give you guys just a little idea of what this three channel equalizer can do. Next, you can go to sound effect. Now you can see off stamina. That's where the standard used to be. And then you can switch it between extra bass and live 3D audio sound. So I'm gonna keep it in extra bass for right now. And right here, DJ effect, that's really interesting. I'll get into that a little later on. All right, so right now I'm just gonna put it in clear audio plus, go backwards and let's play this song right here, no copyright music, and and let's see, I'm going to adjust the volume right around 50%, right there, so let's go. We're about two feet from the speaker. This is 50%, my bad. Okay, 50%. Now let's go to 75. Okay, now let's go to 100. Okay. All right, so as you guys saw right there, I switched it between extra bass and live mode, just so you can see the differences. And then after that, I went into the three channel equalizer and messed around with the little levers there just to give you guys an idea what each lever did and what it would sound like on 100% volume. I mean, what did you guys think? I know it's kind of hard to grasp the actual sound through a microphone here, but me sitting here listening to this, it sounds fantastic. Yes, it does get a little distorted at 100% volume with extra bass on and that bass EQ all the way up. But honestly, with these new passive radiators on the side, 
The bass sounds phenomenal. And yes, it does still sound great at 50% and 75%, just like the XB32. But just with the simple addition of these passive radiators on the ends here, I think it makes all the difference in the world. It certainly doesn't sound as muddy as the XB32 at 100% volume. So they did seem to solve that problem. But the highs did get a little lost in there at 100% volume. As I went in there and adjusted the treble a little bit, that kind of helped. And of course, I always suggest to go in there and mess with that three channel equalizer. Don't just put it on clear audio plus. I think once you get in there and mess with those settings, you'll just get the best sound out of this speaker. All right, next, one of my least favorite features on the XB32 was Party Boost, where you had to sit there and hit it from different directions and wherever you hit it made a different sound. Very gimmicky. I don't think anyone ever used it. So yes, they did get rid of that on the brand new XB33, but if you go back into, where was it? Into sound, right here on the bottom, you'll see something called DJ effect. A few moments later. All right, so apparently I'm finding out that this Fiestable app will not work when my screen recording program is going. So I have to show you guys what this does without the screen recording going. I'll show you where I am. I'm right in Fiestable and you'll see this. So now you'll see DJ control, illumination, and motion control. So go to DJ control and right here on the bottom, we have these little buttons, so drums. So basically, this worked like last year's party boost, but you don't have to sit there beating it like you're some idiot. Go to scratch. Audience. Voice. Disco, disco. Let's go. Come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Awesome. Phaser. Reggae horn. All right, rhythm. Just a pretty generic drum beat. So obviously up here, if I'm playing a song, let's go back to YouTube now. So let's play that same song. Go back to DJ control. So we have our isolator right here. Let me turn that up so you guys can hear what it's doing. See what I'm doing here on the screen. Notch. Cool. Noise. And jet. Pretty cool. Then obviously we have our party flash here, which we can change our LEDs. Um, whatever color you want. It's not very in-depth, but it does give us some control. And if you don't want that party flash color, just go to custom and it gives us just a nice solid color as you guys can see. And then motion control. So this is where it gets a little weird. So check this out. So this is what you see here. It says if you rotate your phone. Wow. Or if you go side to side. Front and back. You can see it's pretty spotty how it works. Obviously on the top you see illumination, sample, DJ, and playback right there on the top. Or we can do illumination where it changes <laughs> the light show as I do stuff on my phone. Check this out. So weird. Granted, this is a lot cooler than last year's Party Booster, but I'm still never going to use it. So next, Sony claims this is IP67 waterproof and dustproof. So that means it is protected against any dust or sand getting in this speaker. And the 7 means it is submersible up to 3 feet for 30 minutes. They also say it's shockproof and rustproof. So I looked up in their user manual, they said it's shockproof for up to 4 feet and they drop it on a piece of plywood. So I'm going to go grab a big bowl of water. I'm going to drop this in here. I'm going to see if this actually can survive about 7 inches of water. It's the best I can do. All right, so before I drop it in here, Sony recommends that you definitely have this little flap shut in the back before you take it to the pool or the ocean. So this is about seven inches of water. So I'm just going to drop it right in. And yeah, just like last year's 32, it floats. So like I said, it's IP67 rated. It can stand about three feet of water for about 30 minutes, but you drop this in a pool, it's just gonna float there. All right, so now let's do the latency test. So what I wanna do is hold up one of my YouTube videos close to the screen here. You guys can watch my mouth and see if it matches up to what you hear coming from the speaker. So let's do this. 
trying to find my phone. Let's open the Music Center app. So what you wanna do as soon as you get this, download the Music Center app and the Fiestable app. So this is what you're gonna see on the Music Center app here from Sony. So you're gonna have tabs like My Library, Fiestable, Audio In, Music, Spotify, and Settings. When you go to the Settings button, so there's a sound option here, you're gonna see Clear Audio Plus. I mean, yeah, to me, that looks like it's perfectly syncing up to what I see on the video here. So it looks like that Bluetooth 5.0 is really a huge upgrade from that 4.2, just based on latency alone. So finally having Bluetooth 5.0 on the Sony XB33, I don't think I'm gonna miss that 3.5 millimeter auxiliary jack, but that's just me. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. What do you guys think of the brand new Sony XB33? I mean, there's a lot to say about this speaker. It's a brand new, fresh redesign by Sony. They finally gave us USB Type-C. They finally gave us Bluetooth 5.0. Also a much needed feature, they gave us dual passive radiators on each end. They did some good things by getting rid of the party booster, but then they got rid of being backwards compatible with older Sony speakers. They got rid of the 3.5 millimeter auxiliary jack. But for me, it's not a big deal that Bluetooth 5.0 basically has has zero latency. I'm not really sure if these newly designed diaphragms make a difference, but it does sound a little bit better than the previous XB32. Overall, I'd have to give this speaker an 8.5 out of 10. Now, I did pick this speaker up for $149.99, but right now on Amazon where I bought it, it's completely sold out. Now, I will put links below in my description box, one to the Sony website, one to Amazon. They're not affiliate links. I am not sponsored by Sony. I don't see a dime from them. In fact, they saw $150 from me. But if you guys did enjoy this video, please give me that thumbs up. Please subscribe and go!